This is Trojan News. Welcome to 2022's first edition of Trojan News. I'm Anthony Bent. And I'm Hebron, and we'll be your host for today. There are three brand new staff members at Worthington High School. Journalist Faneuil Walde finds out more about them individually. This fall, we have two new teachers starting their teaching career and one starting his second year of teaching. We are excited to welcome Mrs. Hensling, a new science teacher, Mrs. Johnson, a new math teacher, and Mrs. Hendrickson, our new counselor to WHS. Mrs. Hensling graduated from Worthington High School in 2018. She received her bachelor's from SDSU in 2022. This is her first year teaching, and she is teaching biology classes at WHS. I would say the easiest part of my first year teaching is just making connections with students. Um, since I'm only like four to six years older than them, it's, it's like making friendships, but in a more professional way, but it's been easy. And then the hardest part has definitely just been time management and learning all the different things it takes to become a teacher. Um, there's a lot more on my plate that I didn't think was gonna be there. Mrs. Hendrickson is a new counsel at WHS, and, it's, and it is her first year. She earned her undergraduate degree from the University of Wisconsin and graduate with her master's from St. Cloud State University in 2022. She wanted to become a counselor because she wanted to help students in some way, even though it hasn't always been her dream job. Oh, I was originally going to be an elementary school teacher. And I pretty much was thinking about that all until my last year of my undergrad. I was originally thinking about either doing rehab counseling or school counseling. Mr. Johnson is in his second year teaching. He graduated in 2021 from Northern Western College in Orange City, Iowa. He teaches math here at WHS and wanted to become a math because his math teacher told him he should be a math teacher when he gets older at his senior awards night. His reflection to WHS has been smooth. Of shifts, a lot of changes throughout the school year. I started one way and then partway through realized, oh, this is not the best way to do it. So I have to, a lot of changing and adjusting happened. Um, so far this year, I've done still a little bit more changing and adjusting because it's the first year in a new school. So. I'm still working on adjusting some things to make sure the classes run as smoothly as they can, but I think I've gotten a much better start this year than I did in my first year. Mrs. Hendrickson moved to Worthington from the cities and is glad she moved to a small town. I've always liked the quiet lifestyle compared to the cities. I hated hearing the sirens every day throughout the day. Even though I wasn't even in Minneapolis, I was 40 minutes from there, but I always liked this quietness. Mrs. Hansting is in a unique spot because her dad is also her boss and her old teachers are now her co-workers. I loved going to high school here and my friendships that I made and the opportunities that I had were great and so I thought might as well come back and give back to my community. This year we have many new teachers teaching at WHS and that helped us shape our community and impact us in a positive way. We are so excited to have Mrs. Hansting, and Mrs. Johnson, and Mrs. Hendrickson joining our high school. This is Fanyol for Children News. I learned so much about these new teachers here at WHS. I hope I get the chance to be in one of their classes this year. In addition to new staff, there is a brand new school in Worthington called the Inner Media School. Journalist Brianna Ramirez goes to this school to check it out and talk to the assistant principal. Due to the overcrowding at the elementary and middle school, the district decided to open up the intermediate school. The intermediate school includes third, fourth, and fifth graders, and it opened up this fall. After six attempted referendums, they finally got the okay in 2019 to start construction, and in 2021, they started building the new school. The school has been up and running since the start of the 2022 school year. Mr. Van Breesen is the assistant principal at the intermediate school, and he shares some of the new features in the building. They attend their classes every day. They uh, get a dose of reading and writing and science and social studies and math each and every day. So that's kind of fun, which includes uh, 
physical education classes along with music and art each day and then that typically brings us to the end of the day. Uh, fourth graders also have an opportunity to participate in orchestra and our fifth grade students also can participate in both orchestra and band. So those are some exciting things that we have to offer each and every day here at the Intermediate School. Even though there were logistical challenges starting the year, Mr. Van Briesen emphasizes its year couldn't have started without their great staff. You know, I think um, probably the other biggest issue was probably, you know, combining uh, teachers from both buildings. Uh, you know, obviously the middle school teachers who came from the middle school had a certain way of doing things and certain philosophies which they followed in their teaching. And then, of course, our third and fourth grade teachers uh, you know, coming from the elementary setting, that looked a little bit different. So, so basically taking those two philosophies, that middle school philosophy and that elementary philosophy, and, and you know, making them blend together the, the best that we can so that, so that students can learn to the best of their abilities. While the building is new, there are still many familiar faces at the intermediate school. Mr. Eichenberger is a third grade teacher who has been teaching in the district for 10 years. Well, there's many things I like about the new school. One thing for sure is just the commons area. All the third graders are just right here in the commons compared to Prairie where you kind of walk down Little Hall and then see all the classrooms. But now with the new setup, you have basically all the third grade teachers and you can see them through the window too, which is a nice little feature that the school has added to it. The school also has a new playground, which the kids get to enjoy every day. I enjoyed having the chance to go into the new school. What a great opportunity for third, fourth, and fifth graders to attend classes here. Whoa, the intermediate school looks so big and fun. I wish we went there when we were younger. I hope the kids that have the honor to go to the school have fun. The Family and Consumer Science Department is getting a new remodel. They are completely redesigning the way the kitchens look and the way they'll be used. Here's drones. Evie Garcia wrote a story. Destruction and construction. That is what has taken these current students to be able to see the new and improved Max Kitchen, especially through all this time and barely being able to continue with the learning in the kitchens. With the help of a local contractor, the school was able to design a new do for the Fax Kitchen, although with every project it has its own complications and challenges. Here are some stated by our principal, Mr. Hastings. Yeah, it's a local contractor. I don't really know offhand the, the name of the contractor, but it's a local person, a cabinet maker in town here, and they've. It, it's just been a slower process because of the supply chains that are affecting everyone in the United States. But we have a local person that's that's designing and doing the cabinetry. There is, like I said, the supply chain, um, and there was some mistakes done, so that's why it's been taking so long to get it done. But we're hoping to get it done within the next week or so. Huge challenges for huge projects. What makes you question? What's the cost? Well, here's Mr. Hastings telling us a little more about it and the cost. I, I think the cost is still ranging between twenty-five and thirty thousand um, dollars. A lot of the money that was used, I think, was a grant with ESSER funds, and ESSER funds was stuff that uh, funds that were um, allocated during COVID. So I, I think that's how we're covering the cost of, of most of the updates that are going to happen in the fax lab. Whoa, that's a lot of money. Makes you wonder why we even needed the new kitchens. Well, here's Ms. Benz telling us why the change was needed. Well, after all this time, um, as far as if you're referring to the number of years that I've taught here, it has been fantastic to get the opportunity to redo the kitchens. There were some cupboards. Um, when I started, the cupboards were two different colors. Um, some of the countertops were not standard height. The um, older cupboards were falling apart, and the custodians were helpful fixing them, but it was definitely time to um, have a safer kitchen and one that was a little bit more updated and um, to be utilized in the way that family and consumer science has changed. That's a very important need for new kitchens, although others think otherwise. I, I think there wasn't anything wrong with it. I think it just needed updating. I, I think a lot of facilities in this building get used um, a lot, so I think it was just time for the fax room to be updated. Um, just because it was just time. It was, it was years and years since it has been updated, so that's why we looked at doing this project. 
Still trying to complete the new kitchen, the entire kitchen, it has pushed the classes back, making it harder to learn for the individuals when they can't teach or learn in class. Um, yes, it's pushed us back for some of our projects. Dang, that is quite a challenge. Isn't it troublesome, Gershon? Yes, because we're not able to cook like we would be able to in the fax room. And because of learning from the library, it has caused a lot of challenges for others. Um, from what I've learned, I can't focus at the library. I think I'm a hands-on learner, so I would prefer being here instead in the library. It not only has affected the students, but also the teachers and the way they teach in their classroom. Here's Ms. Bentz telling us a little more about it. Well, one of the things that has been a blessing <laughs> is because of COVID, um, a lot of my lessons were were formatted so that they could be taught without the use of a kitchen. So the information, this is a foods and nutrition class. Um, one of the classes that I'm teaching is foods and nutrition. So with the idea that the construction is going to be done within this term, I kind of started with the nutrition part, um, the research part that normally would be at the end of the term, kind of put it at the beginning of the term. So the students have been learning um, the same thing that they would be learning if we had the kitchens. It's just we would be able to have some labs to break up the lecture and tests and that type of learning rather than um, just going straight with information and that they need to know. Um, family and consumer science is moving toward more of an um, preparing students for industry and so it's been good to focus more on the information that they need to know as they get out in the work world. So after more than 22 years, our school's fax kitchen has finally gotten the much-needed makeover it deserved. This has been Abby Garcia from Georgia News. Astonishing new look. I've learned so much about this huge project. The final look is completely amazing. The future students will sure use and adore these kitchens. Homecoming has been celebrated for more than 100 years. Journalist Natsui Morales tells us more about the history of homecoming. This year at WHS, students got to have fun in celebration of homecoming by dressing up, attending a football game, and a dance. But what exactly is homecoming and why is it such a big deal? Homecoming dates back to the 1900s where college football games would bring everyone back home from summer break and boost school spirit. It not only acknowledges, but also reflects on memories made at school. In WHS, homecoming wasn't celebrated until the 1940s. In other schools, homecoming used to be centered around a football, basketball, hockey, or soccer game. Students could participate in many activities like parades, listen to the school's choir, attend coronation of a homecoming queen, and attend the homecoming football game. Dress Up Week wasn't introduced until the 1950s in California, but that doesn't mean high schools didn't have fun. Instead, classes would gather and play games throughout the week. The way we celebrate homecoming has changed so much over the years. Although we still do many of the activities, things weren't always the same. Miss Hastings explains how homecoming was done when she went to high school here at WHS. Um, when I was in high school, I don't think we did coronation at the beginning of the week. I remember going to the gym on like Friday. I remember going like all dressed up in Trojan apparel with my friends. And we would go to the gym and coronation would be on Friday. They would do lots of games and they would crown the king and queen. So it was a little bit different, but I like it this year where I, they get to be king and queen all week. At the end of the school week, much like our own, there was always a football game. People from all ages could attend and cheer on their team. Although there are no records of our school having one, the game would always include a big bonfire to signify the school spirit. On Saturday, high school students would spend their afternoons getting ready and nights partying at the school's homecoming dance. These events would bring friends and students closer. Mr. Brandt, being formally in charge of student council, explains why he thinks homecoming is an important tradition. I think homecoming is important because it creates this sense of community. Like, we're all different in this building, but at the end of the day, especially at the end of homecoming day, we're all Trojans. So we're all in that together, not to quote High School Musical or anything. Um, but yeah, it creates that sense of this is our school and we are the Trojans and that's important. Homecoming is a fun way to celebrate school spirit. It lightens the mood, makes it more fun, and helps create memories that'll last a lifetime. This has been Natsley for Trojan News. I had no idea there was even a history behind homecoming. Thanks, Natsley, for sharing that insight. Thank, thanks for watching Trojan News. This has been Anthony Benz. And Hebron. Catch, Catch you next, next time. time.